JL, before we touch on the upcoming season, let's go back to that magical game, the elimination final last year, just over there at, at Optus. How much did that win create belief in what you could possibly do this year? Yeah, oh, it was obviously a phenomenal game. Um, yeah, I think um, the belief was built before then. Uh, we, I think we'd come from behind seven or eight times up until that stage throughout the year. Um, and obviously left ourselves a fair bit of work to do. So I think one of the big learnings over the, out of that game that has carried us on to the pre-season is we don't want to leave ourselves in that position as much as we did last year. So we've been doing a lot of work around our starts. Um, you know, we want to start faster. We want to start more physical. Um, so we've been, you know, using that to drive us um, at the start of training and making sure we, you know, really purposeful with everything we do, but really purposeful in particular at the start of our training session. So hopefully you see a team that, you know, is able to, um, yeah, start a lot faster this year and really put it to the opposition from the very first bounce. 25 days out from round one against St Kilda, but in a couple of days you'll play against Adelaide. You must be excited to be playing against a team that's not also wearing purple? Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, sick to death of watching two teams um, on vision and coding two teams. So <laughs> said it to the players, it's a, it's a real um, difficult skill to um, look at the game's glass half full um, when, you know, if your offence is going well, your defence is going poorly um, when you're playing each other. So <laughs> it'll be a nice, um, yeah, nice step to take towards round one to be able to play against another team and um, see where we're at. Like this, you know, there's still a little bit of anxiety around where we're actually at. Like you, know, you sort of think you're going well in certain areas, but until you come up against another team playing a different style and, and, and a team that doesn't know what you're trying to do, um, you're a little bit unsure. So we'll get a good marker in the ground this week. The depth is as good as it's been for some time. I tried to do a Frio best 22 the other day. I couldn't do it. So good luck with that, mate. Um, is that a, it, it's obviously a good problem to have, but there's a lot of pressure on selection. Yeah, yeah, it's great. It's a great position to be in as a club, and I think um, all our players are well aware of the fact that you know there is depth in each spot, and that's been pushing the competitiveness across the pre-season. So the coaches have got a really um, difficult task um, in selecting and narrowing down that group leading into round one, and, and a, a little bit of that will start this week and continue on. But um, you know, I, I guarantee any player across the list that. You know, if they're, if they're playing well, opportunities will present across the year. So, um, you know, we need to be really mature with the way we handle that selection disappointment and put the team first and understand that everyone will need to play a part across the season. And good luck to anyone playing Peel this year because it's going to be a bloody good side. Um, Sean Darcy tapping the ball down to Luke Jackson. Luke Jackson <coughs> tapping the ball down to Sean Darcy. Where are you at with the big boys in the middle? How is it going to work? Uh, I can see Sean straight through there. He's in my eye line. Um, <laughs> He wants it. Uh, yeah, well, we had our hopes of Luke being able to play multiple roles for us coming into the um, coming into the club, um, and you know, clearly he's an unfinished product. Um, he's got a lot of growth in him, so yeah, we'll look to explore that throughout the year. I'm like really happy with our midfield depth. Um, you know, we had some of the guys up here before, but you know, you had Erasmus and Johnson and those guys that are developing into that into that group as well. So. We're not short on midfielders, so um, we are probably a little bit short on Ruckman, so in terms of, um, yeah, Ruckman that have, you know, had AFL experience, so, um, yeah, we'll, we'll continue to evolve it throughout the season, but, um, you yeah, we probably need those two down forward kicking goals as well, so, um, yeah, it'll play out across the early part of the season. Now, as well as Alex Pearce, who stood in as a captain last year, Jay Romero did that a fair bit at Hawthorne. Uh, what have you seen from him as a leader since he arrived? <laughs> Yeah, I always, um, you know, when you lose someone of David Mundy's calibre out of the club, you know, you're always a little bit worried about who's going to pick up the slack and he's come in and, and, and picked up that slack, not only in the role he's played on the field, but the maturity and the way he's gone about his business um, off the field. Um, he's been a real pro. Um, he's been able to make really strong connections within the playing group and, you know, from my point of view, he's gone about it the right way. So, um, yeah, he's been a great addition. Any final words to the room? Uh, not, not a heave. I'd just like to say thanks to everyone here today, um, your support. Um, you know, to have everyone in, in the room together, it's been the first time in a number of years. So, yeah, it's great. You're, you're a valued member of the Fremantle family. Um, you know, we understand as a football department that the expectations are um, going up this year, but we're going to remain yeah, really true to our process. Uh, we're going to remain you know, really well prepared. Um, 
we're going to um, play our role for the team and uh, you know, we're, we're going to fight for everything. I think that was a trademark of our game last year that we fought for everything and that's what we've done since the inception of our club, so we'll continue to do that this year. Justin Longmuir, everybody. Thanks. Thank you, JL.